What's up guys, it's Aiden Gray here and welcome back to another video. Today's video we are going to be talking about things that you should think of when you are creating or, or putting together your cinematography reel. So let's get into it. Hey guys, I'm back, and just in a new place today, um, it's very, very sunny out, so I've decided to put out myself in this couch bed, instead of three meters that way, where I usually film, and just use natural lighting and a light, so yeah, I'm just chilling, really. So, today's video, I want to talk about things that you should think about when you're putting together your cinematography reel. Recently I've been trying to put mine together because the end of the year is coming up and I want to release mine on December 25th for a few reasons, but I'll get to that later. And I and I think that I have learnt a few things that I want to share with you guys. So I guess we'll hop right into it with a list, a list format I guess. So let's go. So the first thing I want to talk about, first thing I want to talk about is what is a uh, reel, a cinematography reel to be exact. S for, me for me, it's kind of like a resume, a resume of all my best shots and cinematic layouts that I've done throughout the year. You can also do it for a month or even just a shoot or a film singular, but I'm doing it throughout the whole year and I've been putting it together recently, but using shots from start of the year, January, all the way up until like last week when I did a scene for Case. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about if you're deciding to put together your reel for the end of the year, what you guys should think about and what you guys should think about putting in it. So yeah, that's pretty much what it is and I'll get into the reel list. The first thing that you should think about is how long your reel is. Usually your reel goes on your website or your social medias or both and it has to be a certain length, not because of like formatting or something but because people get bored easily. Now, depends on what your situation is, and my situation is this, I'd send this to people that I wanna work for and stuff as a freelancer, but whatever your situation is, it can't be too long. Mine's right now about two minutes, which I think is good because I've done quite a lot this year, but if it ends up being like five, 10 minutes long, people aren't gonna watch that. And if you have a case where pretty much all your stuff throughout the year is equally as good, or even save the best for last if you've done that, then you people are gonna get bored and stop watching after the first one minute or two minutes of it. And then they might not see at the end of your reel where you have some shots that a, maybe you did a video for a client that say um, was a gardener and, the, and a different gardening company is watching this video, they're gonna think, oh, this guy hasn't done something, maybe we'll find someone else. Even though you have, but they've got bored and stopped watching quickly. So you've got to cut it down, three to four shots per project at least, just three or four of your best shots. It may be hard because you may be really emotionally attached to some, like I have, and I've had to really struggle to cut down on some shots that I really wanted to use, but you're gonna to have to do it and it'll just make it better in the long run. So, length, cut it down. Now the second thing I wanna talk about is your shot selection. Now, your shot selection should be very, very different. As in, every shot should be different, every shot should be like, this is just what I think, this is just my opinion on what I think my reel and I want it to look like and what I think I would look for in a reel if I was looking to hire a cinematographer. I think every shot should kind of be pretty much different. So if you have one project and you have one shot that's really moody, it's like almost dark, you can only see his face or your per actor's face, and that shot you've spent hours on it, you think it looks amazing, great, put that in. 
But if in a different project you have a very, very similar shot, maybe it's a diff just a different person, maybe it's a different mood, I don't know, but the same kind of shot, blackness, like maybe just their face shows, you don't want to put both of those in because it's just repetitive. You want variation in the shots that you have in your reel. Like, for my reel, I have this shot that I'll play now, it's from Case, it hasn't been released yet, but I'll play it now. So that shot had a side on, actor talking, very intense, it was like one of the last shots of the scene to uh, really make an impact. And if I then put in another shot very similar to that, then from a different film, then it could just get repetitive. So I haven't and that's just alone. But what I could have done is I could have done this, and then this three scenes after, same film, same thing, just the same shot pretty much. Then it gets repetitive and they're just saying, oh, this guy's running out of things, maybe he hasn't done that. I, I don't know what they'll think, but I don't think you should have two pretty much identical shots. So, yeah. Variation. Have variation in your reel. The third thing is music. Music is a very important part of your reel because nobody just wants to sit there and watch a ton of shots scroll past the screen. So you've got to make kind of edit together like you would B-roll or an edit which has what I've done and I've chosen some nice music that I found from Danny Gewurz's reel and I've just used it because I thought it really was good, it was calm, it didn't distract and it was just good. And the song I used was very calm, it was smooth, it was relaxing, it was kind of just, it went over it so you could watch what was happening. And I think that's what it should be like. You shouldn't have like big rock, heavy metal music like that because then it might distract or it might take away from the thing. Very, very often does this happen where you have very good footage, you have an amazing reel, and then you have bloody electronic hip hop music going over it, and the person is just thinking, geez, this music is terrible, and it's distracting from the great, amazing, super awesome shot that is going. Maybe like a plane is flying over a dinosaur giving birth. They're gonna not think of that because of the terrible music you've chosen. So, nice, calm, relaxing music. Maybe it can be happy, it can be something. Just make sure it doesn't distract from the footage and make sure it's not the thing that people should be looking at. The last thing I wanted to talk about for your reel is where it should go. So, for a lot of you, you might have a website. You'll have, I'm almost certain that you'll have some sort of social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And you need to decide where you want to place your cinematic reel. Now, the first thing you should think of is your website. That's where mine, is the first place it's going, and it's going at the top. So right now, I, what I have, if you go down the link in the description and you've ever decided to look at my website, it has a scro uh, big scroll of just lots of projects that I've done for clients, films, anything. Lots of projects I've done, and they're just scrolling there. And as soon as I've finished my cinematic reel, it's going right at the top because it's just a compilation of all those, but the very best shots, the only things I, and they're kind of the shots that I want the client to see. And I think you should kind of think of the same thing because it's just, you want them to look at it, you want them to go, oh yes, I want this person because these shots are amazing. And also, it should, I'm also putting it on pretty much all my social medias, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, because I just want to get it out there, I want people to see it, and I just want it to be like, center of attention for my YouTube, so it's gonna go on the top. For Instagram, it will be, uh, I guess it'll just be there, I might go scroll down. Facebook, I'll place it there. Just, I'm trying to get it out there and place it as many places as possible. I might try to get people to, like some of my friends to place it on their stuff. I don't know, but I'm just trying to get it out there and I think you should too, especially on website, right at the top so people can see it. And that's all I really have to talk to you guys about today. Thank you so much for watching. I haven't posted that much recently because I've been working on my other film, uh, some of the shots you've seen today about Case. I've been like working on that very, a lot. Oh, hey Risk. I've been working on that a lot. Um, my dog just came. Uh, and yeah, so I haven't been posting that much recently. I'm gonna try to get back into the swing of things while I wait for things to happen. I'm just waiting to get some green lights for a scene I wanna shoot for Case. I'm waiting for other things to happen, just pretty much waiting, so I'm trying to get back into the swing of YouTube. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Later.